Passport applications are a real headache, especially with all the details you have to give to prove you are who you say you are. And with identity theft more and more common these days, there's always the added concern of whether your information is actually safe. What's to stop someone else getting hold of your details and pretending they're you? With the old sort of passport, you knew where you stood. If you lost it, you knew you had lost it. But with new machine-readable passports, the story is very different. Here are some snaps I took of the Christmas market in Hildesheim, Germany. Now, the thing about digital photos is that the image is in effect a code. So however many prints you make, they're all exactly the same. So when Hildesheim residents Lukas Grunwald and Christian Botcher realised they could clone the new e-passport, they were pretty sure it would be identical to the original and undetectable. So how did they do it? The chip inside the e-passport is Radio Frequency Identification, or RFID, which is poised to replace the barcode in supermarkets. The good thing about RFID chips is they emit radio signals that can be read at a short distance by an electronic reader. Incidentally, this is also the bad thing about them, because as Lucas demonstrates, he can easily download the data from his passport. I have here a German passport. This is actually my own passport. I have issued at my uh, German passport authority. I'm now putting this passport on top of this RFID reader I got for 200 uh, euros on eBay. Lucas is less forthcoming about where he got what's called the Golden Reader tool. It's the very software used by border police and allows him to read the chip on his e-passport including the photo. Now, for the clever bit, thanks to a software he himself has developed called RF Dump, he downloads the passport's data onto his computer and then onto a blank chip. This is a standard off-the-shelf component. You can just buy at a component store. I'm putting this card on the reader. And in less than five minutes, you have a cloned e-passport. And now let's have a look how the cloned passport rate compared to my original one and if I'm starting to read it it behaves exactly the same like my original passport. If you are a holder of this electronic passport you are in a higher risk that someone is going to steal your privacy data. Nearly every country who is issuing this passport have a few security experts who, is ge who are gelling at the top of their lungs and trying to shout out, this is not secure, it's not a good idea to use this technology. It's been set up in a hurry. It's much too complicated. Um, it's um, in places done the wrong way round. Reading data first, parsing data, interpreting data, and then verifying whether it's right. Lots of technical flaws in it. And the whole, there have been things have been just forgotten. So it's basically not doing what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to get a higher security level. It's not. A European Union funded network of IT security experts has also come out against the e passport scheme. Researchers working within the FIDIS network, the future of identity in the information society, say European governments have forced a document on its citizens that dramatically decreases security and increases the risk of identity theft. RFID chips can be read at a short distance and tracked without their owner's knowledge, while the key to unlocking the passport's chip consists of details actually printed on the passport itself. It's almost like writing your PIN number on the back of your cash point card. The basic access control mechanism works on, based on information like the number of the passport, the name of the passport holder, the date of birth, and then of other data which are simply readable by anybody who looks on the passport. If you have that information and, and put the respective software into the reader, and the reader can overcome the basic access control of the passport. The doubts about this technology are not just limited to its use in passports. Many governments are planning to use the same technology or something very similar to it in national identity card schemes. The problem with that is the sort of data that could possibly fall into the wrong hands would be much more sensitive. 
Security experts say that governments taking a one ID fits all approach are asking for trouble. The weight of data that the card will be able to unlock will mean get it wrong and the implications for individuals could be disastrous. If the technology is not mature, if it is somehow vulnerable against identity theft, the whole identification infrastructure becomes vulnerable against identity theft. So the damage that could occur, the impact on the individual citizen would be much more severe. Keep it small and sector specific. Do not build up the potent system. It is very likely that this will fail somewhere and that the impact is also to be seen in other sectors. The experts say it's not too late to roll back and rethink the e-passport. If not, the danger is obvious that a scheme, the declared aim of which is to increase our security, could well do the exact opposite.